Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to learn how to create an ECS cluster. So before actually creating a cluster, we'll first try to understand what are ECS objects and how is their orientation, right? So let's get started. So basically, we have got ECS cluster, right? So, in case of implementation, we can implement this ECS cluster in two ways, either with EC2 launch type or with AWS Fargate, which we have already studied in the previous lecture, right? So, in this case, we'll be considering EC2 launch type, yeah? So, in this case, my nodes of particular ECS cluster will be ec2 instances which i can manage right so basically a collection of these particular ec2 instances will form my ecs cluster then on top of these ec2 instances we have got services now what is a service service allows you to run and ma maintain a specified number of instances of a task definition in an ECS cluster okay so it will be managing the task definitions and at the same time we can also add application load balancers to the instances with the help of the service on top of these service run different tasks which manage the containers right so this is what is an overview of ECS objects. So the first step that we'll be doing is connecting or creating an ECS cluster. So let's go to our AWS console and create an ECS cluster. So let's go and search for the ECS that is Elastic Container Service. In this we'll be going to clusters since we want to create a cluster right so now we'll go and say create cluster now you can see that we have got three different cluster templates available right here okay so this networking only is about an aws fargate which we are not going to implement in this lecture so we have got two different options while working with the different operating systems like EC2 Linux plus networking. It will make us work with the Linux EC2 instances along with the resources that we need to create in this particular launch type. Whereas we'll be working with Windows over here. So for now i'll be considering this particular option wherein we'll be creating cluster then vpc and subnets along with the auto scaling group okay so this i will go to the next step now first for configuring the cluster we need to enter the name for that particular cluster i'll be mentioning it as ecs cluster right you can create an empty cluster if you want for ta for this demo i won't be considering an empty cluster since i'll be adding ec2 instances to my cluster then after that we have got instance configuration and within that we have got provisioning model now there are two types of provisioning models available over here one being on demand instance while the other is a spot instance right so basically on demand instances you pay for the compute capacity by the hour right whereas in case of spot we make use of the unused or spare ec2 capacity in the aws cloud so it definitely helps us save costing right so if you want to make this a feature available with less amount of costing then in that case you can go for spot instance but for now i'll go with on demand instance okay then after that we have got ec2 instance type 
I'll be selecting it to be a T2 dot micro. Yes, right there. Then for the number of instances, I'll be considering one instance as of now. And for the AMI ID that is used to create the EC2 instances, they have already given us this particular AMI or the image that has got ECS agents installed on it. So we don't have to explicitly go and install those ECS agents on EC2 instances. So it does your work half the way right there, right? So the next thing is about root EBS volume size. So you can add the size as per your requirement. I am going with 30 only for now. Okay, then we have got key pair. So within the key pair, I have already created a key pair for ECS service. You can create key pair if you don't have created it yet. Right. Now we'll be working with networking. Now we are done with the cluster as well as mentioning the instance configuration as well. So now we are working with networking. So for networking of this particular ECS cluster, we'll be making use of default VPC. Okay, for subnet, I'll be adding few public subnets, right? And then after that, for, the, for assigning a public IP, I will be making use of subnet setting. Then after that, we have got security group. Okay, so I have already created a security group. So I'll be just attaching that particular um, secure security group with inbound rules containing 2022 port open for SSH protocol, right? So for the again we have got container instance im role now this role helps our ecs work with ec2 instances right so the ecs access is provided to our ec2 instances for the smooth running for that right so that's it then we have got tags. You can add any of the tags if you want. I won't be adding any of the tags, but you can if you want. Then after that, we have got CloudWatch Container Insights. Now, if we enable this Container Insights, it will push all the container logs to our, to our CloudWatch with the help of which we can work with it and also watch all the logs in our CloudWatch. So I have enabled it and create. You can see that ECS cluster has successfully created. Then we have got ECS instance IAM policy where we have attached ECS instance role, right? For the ECS agent to implement with EC2. Right. Then we have got cloud formation stack and everything is created now. We can now go to our auto scaling group. So in this case, we it got created automatically while working with ECS and you can see that the desired capacity, minimum capacity as well as maximum capacity are mentioned in here, followed by this auto scaling group name, date time, as well as the name of Amazon resource name, where it has also, uh, I mean it also shows the launch, launch configuration followed by AMI, then we have got the instance type mentioned, the key pair name, everything, all the detailed uh, information about your particular auto scaling group will be mentioned right here. 
along with monitoring, then instant pressure, everything will be available right here. Then after that, we'll go to launch configurations. Okay. In this case, you will observe the detailed of uh, this thing for our EC2 instance, wherein it has mentioned the AMI ID along with the instance type, then I am instance profile. Everything is mentioned over here for also including the user data. Now in this user data, we have echoed the name of the cluster in this particular file of our um, ecs.config on our EC2 instance. Okay, so if we create, if we go into that particular instance and check for this particular file, it should show us this along with this particular ECS backend host. So these things will be visible in our EC2 instance that we have used for configuring our ECS cluster. Okay, so let's go to our cluster. And now you can see that the name has been mentioned over here, followed by the cluster ARN. Then we have got the status, right? Whether it's active or not working or any of those. You can see that register container instances is one. Since we have used one over here. And within the ECS instances, we can see that this is the instance or the container instance that's running followed by the ECS instance. Then we have got availability zone, which our instance or ECS is working. Then we have got agent connected. That is true. Then we have status again, running task. We haven't defined any of the tasks and hence it is showing us as zero then we have got cpu available which is 1024 and the memory available is about 982 so you can see the agent version followed by the docker version so everything related to this particular ecs instance will be available right here we can also view the metrics over here then we have got different scheduled tasks since we haven't scheduled any of those it will be empty as of now right. hope that's it for this lecture hope you found the video helpful please like share and subscribe to my channel if you found the videos helpful also don't forget to press that bell icon for the le latest updates let me know what kind of videos you want me to make so that I can make those videos accordingly and help you guys work with different DevOps objects. Thank you so much and have a nice day.